Peace, what's going on? I'm J. Rod D. And I'm G. You're now tuned into the Poor Life Podcast. Hosted by none other than Nuance. Nuance, 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 man. Pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff going on. Yeah, man. With Poor Life and Nuance and Gold Soul and the family. Tell them what's going on, brother. So, Poor Life Academy has been offered the opportunity to teach poetry to children between the ages of 5 and 17 for eight weeks at Bus Boys in Tacoma, Maryland. Yes, yes. And I'm happy to be one of the teachers to teach the 13 to 17 year old group. We that's, also, the yeah, that's what's up, that's man. That's the right thing. Put it there, pal. We also have Lucky, Lucky. as well as a poet named Epiphany. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with her, but she's a phenomenal poet. Man. And she and they're teaching the 5 to 11 and 12 to 13, well, 5 to, what, the 5 to 10 and then 10 to 13, respectfully. Yeah. So, needless to say, Poor life is making moves. So that uh that list that they just he just ran off of poets, some warriors, man. Some word warriors. And I'm excited just to see how that thing's gonna build. I'm excited to mm-hmm. see how, you know, the young minds is gonna be churning. Mm-hmm. And I'm also excited to see how that's gonna do for y'all art too. Yeah, that's definitely. gonna strengthen your pain because you know iron sharp iron, you know. I was thinking about it on the way up here and I remember seeing a video that Lucky will post. And then uh, Christopher Post about uh, just the progress they're making and how, how the students are yeah. reacting to um, the courses and the classes and everything like that. And it's inspiring to see. So I know, like, you know, I get a chance. Definitely going to be a, an experience for myself. So I'm, I'm all in. I'm excited. I'm thankful. This is an opportunity right here to be yeah, teaching man. that bus boys and poets, you know, yeah, every, every Saturday. So if you would like to get your child involved, I'm going to poorlife.com and you can find Poor Life Academy and you can find all the information as far as payment, as far as arranging. As far as uh, itinerary and agenda, and also a field trip into the Kennedy Center, um, first of its kind, I would say, mm. real big place. I went to see y'all seen Bay um, last New Year's. I was like, third and lost row, your mind. Third row from the front. <laughs> I was in a video mind. of it last night. Actually, a third row from the front, and I felt like I was like right there, pretty much in the front row. But um, that's neither here. Yeah. The Kennedy Center for field trip in there, man, feels good. Um, I also want to give a quick shout out to uh, the guys in Baltimore. Uh, what is it? Flow? Yeah, the Flow Foundation. Flow Foundation? Yeah, man. They had the Baltimore Homeless Fest? An amazing, like, we we were honored to be a part of this festival, man, for the homeless people of uh, the city of Baltimore. But it wasn't just for the homeless people, it was for, mm-hmm. you know, for the children. Mm-hmm. It was a chance for, you know, the community to really show their colors and what they do from as far as like the religious standpoint, sports. We had people who had who had fresh produce out there. They had the book bag drive, they like the kitty play center. Yeah. You know, face paint and haircuts. I saw I saw a lot, man, a lot of vendors, a mm-hmm. lot of people from for like the medical field. Just really sinking their teeth into wanting to do more for their community. And it was amazing. We had young Miles out there, mm-hmm. you know, it was just, it was a beautiful place to be for us. Now, I think that was something that really was like sitting real profound in me, you know? I yeah, was, I was definitely. Just, you know how you just sit back and you just observe? Yeah. And then you just see the art and people. Like when, uh, one of my favorite moments, right? If we could just go back to that moment was when uh, it was like a, a youth girls uh, dance team from a local church. It started raining a little bit, but they wasn't worried about none of that. You know, they was out there rocking and just, it, it looked like almost like a movie almost, and you kind of right. saw it in slow motion. It was dope. The sun actually came out. The sun came out after they uh, started dancing. So low key, cool. they brought the sun back out. Low key. The sun back out. When you think about uh, what um, Just Me was speaking of, our last episode that we had, um, yeah. and we're gonna post all the information about just the episode um, tonight, tomorrow. You will, you'll you'll see it on Instagram, Facebook, real soon. Yeah. But just me was speaking about community, and he wanted to open up with that topic, and it kind of kind of like carried out during the whole conversation in some way or form or another. And he spoke about community and uh, being inclusive and having people come come in from different groups, different backgrounds, different walks of life, and coming together and making some kind of event or a place. The place to be instead of it being like okay we're here you're there and we're all missing out on this connection so when we had the Baltimore homeless festival it was definitely that experience of community because as you were saying there was so many different opportunities and vendors different things going on and it wasn't just for the homeless it was for the community yeah. and you actually seen them people came together um so 
It definitely made me think about we need more events like that, especially when it comes to poetry. I think like if we can get all our stuff together, it can be something going on. Like, there's people that write books, that make movies, that do all kind of things within art that we know of. Yeah, and we can come together. Yeah, so shout out to uh, my brother uh, from Bowie State University, Delano Johnson, yes, and his whole team shout for to having Johnson. us out there. Shout out to Tariq, uh, another brother Nas, that you will see soon, hopefully, on the Poor Life Podcast. Great poet, great author, great person. Be delight. You know, um, that brings me to, you know, today's topic. All right, right. Go ahead. Let's, talk, let's talk about that, man. Humble beginnings. Humble man. beginnings. Okay. Humble beginnings. You know, one of the things that just reminded me of just why we do what we do mm-hmm. was Baltimore. Okay. You know, when we got there, the land was just like, yeah, man, because y'all, you know, y'all big time. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? We got to make sure... You know, everything is right, y'all mics is ready, sound check this and the third. And then you looking at each other like, we some, we just regular, right? <laughs> we here. Like, yeah, we here, man. What you, uh, what you need us to do? You need us to help with something, right. set up something? Right. Because I, I don't think people realize, like, you know, yeah, we're, we're growing in this art, but at the same time, we're still at the beginning. Yeah. I feel I will always have a beginner's mindset because I want to learn so much. You know, I want my art to speak for itself, but that humble beginnings of being in that moment and, and molding, that, that present of molding, you know what I mean? Because you, you get to, I feel like, those more, the meaningful performances, mm-hmm. like the festival, mm-hmm. or anything you do for the community, or if someone asks us to speak at a school, or something that requires no payment humble beginnings like will you still go out there and give 110 percent for those who don't have it to give you mm-hmm. to pay you know or do you feel like there's a sense of oh well i was doing these type shows last year why should i be doing these now you know there's some people who may think like that mm-hmm. i don't think we do specifically because of you know the stock that we come from and how much passion that we developed and we put into this thing which led us to be on this podcast so yeah how do you feel about humble beginnings man? okay you know so i don't feel like you can't lose the common touch um if i can quote if oh if I read <laughs> you can't lose the common touch um no matter how high you get and i think it's a testament to just your humility yeah and how infectious that can be and how um how, how much you're willing to just you know get your hand dirty still even if you feel like you've been experiencing the game or whatever for so many years, so many opportunities you have, but you're still able to come in and be like, hey, you still need help with this, or how can I help? And yeah. it's kind of way, cause I, again, I don't see myself as, you know, no celebrity like that, but you know what I mean? Where some people may see us and be like, okay, oh, y'all nuance, y'all do poetry, oh, that's, that's he got words, that's G, he does poetry, he, he can sing. And th- they may place you on a certain level, but in your mind, you're like, well, I'm still a regular guy. And I think that humility just keeps us balance so that we can still be effective and still be able to reach have that, have that broad reach that we have right so it's almost like you have your anchor in your beginning mm-hmm. but you're you know you're reaching towards that thing that that stage and that status that you want that you long right. for right but you can't forget about your anchor right because the moment you get lost in chasing that status you lose your foundation. You, you. I feel like you lose your mm-hmm. stability. Even, it's kind of like when people leave home to go and do whatever they do in life. Mm-hmm. Then you go back home and you hear that somebody be like, "Oh, oh, you big time now. You didn't, you forgot about us little people. You didn't forgot where you come mm-hmm. from." You know, I would never want to get that way. Me personally, like I would want to take where I'm from, how I was raised, and what brought me to where I'm at, along with me. Mm -hmm. You know, everything and everybody can't come, of course, but the key values and and those those important lessons that you learned along the way should always stick with you. So for me, like, the beginning stages and humble beginnings looks like a kid uh, with with his notepad and his pen. You know, never losing sight of always being that kid who always has his notepad and his pen. Mm-hmm. You know, as your words evolve and you learn, you know, how to speak better and how to, you know, dive into different subjects, 
always keep that kid with the notepad and the pen because that's what that's what he fell in love with. Yeah. You know? if, for me, I'm just speaking for yeah, myself, with- you know. So I don't know how it looked for you, but you know that's that humble mindset. I always know that there is somebody out there who is further along in this art than mm-hmm. you, and there's somebody out there who's you know right on your heels. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like uh, one of my uh, favorite athletes, uh, LeBron James. He always competes. Even if he knows that the game is over, even if he knows, like, it, and it's not just in the game of basketball, it's in life. Right. You know, he just opened up a school for underprivileged kids back in his hometown. The first of his kind. Mm-hmm. You and know? they all get tuition. And they all get tuition to Akron. the University of Akron once they graduate. Really? You know what I mean? Like, if that don't say or speak volumes of, you know, humble beginnings, mm-hmm. he has his anchor back home. The man all the way out in L.A. now and still doing things like that back in his hometown. Yeah. What, who's to say we can't do something like that? You know? Who's so to say, You know? Like, wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. So, a couple points. Mm-hmm couple points I want to kind of switch uh, switch seats uh, mentally for you so going against comparing your art to others right that's a uh, that's one thing that I that came to mind when it when we speak on humble beginnings and being humble and humbling your art and I feel like some people get lost in the art meaning that we do the same thing so when I see you and you gain uh, for the sake of our generation, you gain followers mm-hmm. on social media. And I see you being able to meet different people mm-hmm. and go to different venues and do all this. And we started out, out around the same time. Yep. That jealousy can start to form a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, you, you try to, I try to compete with your pen and then it almost is like I'm trying to sound like you mm-hmm. or do and walk in, in, in the path that you walk, but your shoes ain't my shoes. Right. You know what I mean? So what does that look like to you when you start to, when, or when you see people start to compare their art to others? Um, I'll, I'll start here and then I'll bring it to the second part of the question. First part, I actually experienced it myself. Okay. Um, when I first started, it was a good brother who, uh, you know, we grew up together and we both started doing poetry. Um, uh, you know, around the same time, uh, we grew up together and everything like that. So when I left to go to school, I would come back and, uh, uh, you know, seeing that he was doing more poetry, doing more shows, doing more this, doing more that. Gotcha. I'm like, oh, snap, I grew up with this man. That's what's up. And I was doing my humble thing at Eastern Shore. Um, so, and then I finally graduated and came back. And I was like, well, I don't really have no following. I was back home. I don't have no place to go for real, for real. I'm actually fresh. And I seen this good brother. He was out here doing his thing, making moves, traveling, meeting people, and <laughs> yeah. all this kind of stuff. So, initially... Initially, I kind of felt like, man, that, you know, why is that not me? And um, before I got to the point where I was thinking like, man, I'm trying to be like him or uh, I don't like what he's doing. Or before I got to the point where it turned negative, I had to keep myself in a place where, look, man, I got my own path to walk. Yeah. I got my own, my own shoes to fill. Um, so it was leading me to the second point. And I kind of see pieces of that now, like, you know, certain things. or mm-hmm. it, it may not be like a... I'm trying to be like you in the sense where I'm going to my poems like you. Okay. But maybe like a certain style or a certain cadence or a certain um, phrase or a certain, you know, just small things, which I think people catch on just being around each other. But more so, um, I, I think I pick up on it now because I've seen a lot of poetry now. Okay. You know what I mean? So I think yeah. it's a lot easier to pick up on those things. So a humble beginning is what keeps me humble, really, if that's what answers your question. What keeps me humble is just knowing that, again, I got my own path to walk. And even if I do see somebody around me who's succeeding and we're in the same class or they can be a class ahead of me or whatever, it's still like at the end of the day I have my own path. I got my own family to feed. I got my own bills to pay. So, yeah, nah. you know, me trying to be like you is going to get me there. It's going to make me feel like I'm less my own self, you know what I mean? So Yeah. And then, like, another thing because, wait, before I say that, mm-hmm. did it, did you come to that realization quick? that you have your own path because sometimes that takes people a long time to really establish that mindset like listen I can't really try yeah to, yeah you know yeah the thing about it it was like it was like um always knew cuz that that's 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 how everything was established I always knew but it was more so 
just seeing that, of course, you see it and it doesn't always sit well. Right. So it's kind of like it doesn't sit well. You're thinking about it all the time. You're thinking about it every now and again, and now you're not thinking about it at all. But at the same time, you know, in the back of your mind, you got your own path to walk. But it's still just the seeing it and hearing it, and people asking, "Hey, you know, so and so, yeah, he's doing his thing." Okay. And you're like, "Glad you're for it." You know what I'm saying? What about me? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so, I, so yeah, I've been there yeah, before. Yeah, I've yeah. been there, definitely been there before. But I'm glad that I'm glad that I wasn't um, caught up in that trap to make it a negative thing and make it a beef for a big jealousy and envious show that. up. You know what I mean? I more so that. like, a, hey man, I see you, man. I wish it was me, but mm -hmm. I know I got my time. You know, so I think that you know, for me, it kind of took me a while to get to that, mm -hmm. get to that maturity of not comparing and not, you know, feeling that what about me, what about me. I stopped asking that. I mean, I think around the time we started doing shows as nuanced, mm -hmm. maybe what, like last year, I stopped doing that because it was just like, my voice is mine. Right. The way I write and what I write about and how I choose to, you know, use my words is different from J. Rod D. It's mm -hmm. different from Orville. It's different from J. Speaks. It's different from everybody I've studied, you know, I, I can't afford to do the whole compare and contrast because that's going to really deter my lane. Right. You know, I can't stay back where I was, mm -hmm. but I can't try to go forth and be you, Right. you know, and try to follow in your footsteps because that's just not me. And then you're not, you're not me. Mm -hmm. You can't tell the story how I want to tell it. Right. You know, you can't right. grow how I need to grow. In my art and just in general mm -hmm. I needed to do that and just turn away at that and then what you know me and Crystal saw more earlier is just having those sharp individuals around you no matter if they're in the art or not to keep you on your toes to be like hey man you know what well, when's the next show or when like you've been writing lately mm -hmm. what you've been writing you know what I'm saying and just you see them chase theirs yeah it makes you want to chase yours even more. Because like everybody has their lane occupied and you feel as though that you may be stagnant at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, I can do that. Man, I got my brother over here. He doing his thing, he doing that thing. And it's not competition, it's encouragement. Yeah. It's that It's that push. It's that, man, they over here. And you got, it takes a man to chill out of the fellow star. You know that? Mm -hmm. So I can't sit here and be salty. I can't be jealous of your path. That's right. your path. Right. You know what I mean? I can't be jealous of, you know, the crowd giving you more oohs and eyes and throwing pins at your feet. And then I get up there, they be like crickets or a little golf clap or something. Everybody started out, everybody had a golf clap or a cricket moment when they started out. Yeah. Or even now, like some people just may not get it that day. That's okay. Yeah. Don't give you a reason to put down your pen. So, like, that. Brings me to my next, my next section of it. I got three questions for you, okay. brother. Three questions. Remember the why is, is the second, right? So, why'd you start? Why do you still do it? And do you ever feel undervalued? Okay. So, why'd I start? I started performing poetry because I felt like I had something to say that was unique in the sense that... Um, it needed a stage to be set. Like, uh, because I knew either I was going to be a preacher or a poet or a teacher. Yeah. One, I was going to be one of them. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, growing up, I always had that kind of mindset. And poetry kind of came a little more natural. Uh, because, like, again, I wasn't trying to be caught up in a stereotype of being a preacher or a pastor or anything like that. Um, and then I had my own questions that I was trying to deal with at the time. So, poetry came a little more, like, with the next natural step. Because I was still speaking in front of people. I was still giving a message. So I think really it was like, I felt like I had a message, man. I felt like I had a message and a purpose when it came to being on the stage or just writing and, you know, certain things like that. And um, the reason why I'm still doing it is because I had, I feel like the message that I have is still relevant. The message that I have is still important. Mm -hmm. The message that I have is still empowering today. And it can still be used. And um, so I want to make it as accessible as possible. Um, and so do I ever put under value? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, speaking back to what, the previous question you asked me, in those moments of insecurity, I definitely felt like I was undervalued. I kind of felt like uh, I was in a place where I had the talent, I had the talent, I had the ambition, but maybe I didn't have the network, maybe I didn't have the, mm. the know-how. 
I didn't have the, the understanding yet, you know, so so those things kind of made me feel a little insecure when I seen my fellow man shining and I did stand and cheer for them, you know what I mean? But when I got back home, it was kind of like, man, I wish it was me, not even hating on the man. Like, I, I kind of yeah. think that there's a difference between the feeling I'm trying to describe and the negative uh, perception or connotation that I may convey. You know what I mean? What I'm saying is when I had the moments where I feel like, man, why couldn't it be me? It wasn't like, oh, man, I don't like him or whatever. It wasn't like a beef thing or yeah. forget it. It was more so like, you know, man, you know what I mean? Like, down on yourself. What do I got? Yeah, down on yourself. Okay. Like, more so yeah, hard on yeah, yourself. I see that. There you go. I see hard that. on yourself. So, uh, I had to deal with that for a little bit of time, man. So, yeah, I had to the Bible before. And being, being, it, excuse me, <clears throat> feeling undervalued, it sucks, man. <laughs> it sucks. And especially if you don't have an answer and you, you lost your thoughts and your feelings, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah been I've been here before, man. You said something uh, just now, and okay. it was like uh, very little. But I'll, can you speak on like the importance of networking or having that network? Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, so I go back to what Just Me said at the last episode. He said having that team mm. and having that team around you. Uh, for example, we are affiliated with Pro Life now, so we have have a network that Pro Life is connected to we also are affiliate have the same access to the network um with, you know with, with a certain thing whatever so yeah. when it comes to that that's an example of having a network having that team also you again you say having those people around you that can you know talk to you about some stuff that can encourage and lift you up or the ones that support your work hey you've been writing or hey what's going on with your next show yeah. that is also good too having that team and I think we, you know, that's, that's, that's one thing we talk about a lot on the show, is having that team, because I think we need to press the issue more and more. If you have the team around you, you have the right minds around you, you have the right network that you can tap into, there's no question what you can do, no limit to what you can really do. Um, and I think just having that network just opens, your, opens the possibilities that can be afforded to you. And having that team just um, creates a better connection and a better bond that you can use to grow for yourself. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah, man. Say for me, uh, why did I start? I start because I started. Excuse me, because um, I felt as though this was my my alley way to finding myself, mm -hmm. to finding something that I can be confident in outside of like sports and right. stuff like that. Cause yeah. it was, I mean, it wasn't really us, nothing else really. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> for me, it was like I always loved words in poetry and how like you know and I was a sappy little kid too man and I, I had sisters so mm -hmm. so shoot me you know they watched the uh love and basketball brown sugar you know you had your uh your old 90s uh movies that was real poetic mm -hmm. in a way you know love Jones to this day is probably one of my favorite movies you know just simply because of the storyline not mm -hmm. necessarily because it was like around poetry but for what it was, the book of Proverbs, I'm reading that through the uh, month of August. Mm -hmm. It's all poetry for me. And it's just like, it's quotables, it's bars in there. I'm like, whew, circling and highlighting. Mm -hmm. So that, I started because like words to me matter. Yeah. So, you know, a, a young kid who was quiet and didn't really have like a, a voice that people wanted to listen to at the time. It gave me a platform. Why do I still do it? It still gives me that platform. Mm -hmm. Now more than ever because there's a lot of people that I can help and I can help myself by helping others. Right. You know? Uh, a lot of people who may have gone through what I went through before or may have, you know, something on their mind but may not be able to speak on it as, you know, as well as I can now mm -hmm. because I can sit there and just dissect that. You know, when people ask us to write stuff for them, excuse me, or if we're sitting there and we're just in the atmosphere where we are just exposed to something so real that we have to write about it, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And my why is for that reason because you like, and I, I said this, I think on the very first episode, man, the best compensation for me is when people come up to us after the show like, man, thank you so much yeah. for, you know, yeah, what you said, it really helped me, you know what I'm saying, I really needed to hear that, or even when I did the Why Do I Love Black Women Challenge, mm -hmm. you know, it got a lot of streams and a lot of shares. That was actually media. hit, that, that was like, and would, would that be considered viral? 
Uh, I, I guess, you know, maybe, I don't know how many views it's up to yeah. now, but I just spoke my truth. Uh -huh. And a lot of people, you know, agreed with it. A lot of people supported it and just felt, you know, right along with it. And then do I feel under uh, undervalued sometimes? Yeah, I could say I do just simply because people in different avenues, different audiences want to hear different things. Okay. You know, I'll go that route. Mm -hmm. Different audiences want to hear those punchlines, those bars. They don't want to necessarily hear the storyline. Like when we did the storytellers one at uh, Smith Public Trust. That, that, was, that was one. We got to bring that back. We got to yeah. bring that yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We going to practice yeah, that and bring yeah, that to y'all, yeah. man. But yeah. our, we have a piece called Storytellers and yeah. it's just us really dissecting and speaking, mm -hmm. you know, versus like the performance and how we yeah. do usually. But that was different. It was different, but it was good different. It, it, it you know, it challenged us to really write different, and then a lot of people may didn't understand it because mm -hmm. they're used to us being one way. Mm -hmm. So, like the undervalued part feels like you know when we have books, and we are we exist in a generation that tends to not want to read, or, or their attention span is gone after yeah. thirty seconds. You know, we see Instagram and social media, and this is like. Everything is good up to maybe a minute, if it's entertaining enough to for them to not scroll past it. So you get the you you can feel undervalued when it's stuff like that, and and it's it challenges you to really be humble, really be humble, and really you know to continue to pursue your art, to continue to go hard, to continue to love what you do, and be confident, be so confident that you know even when it's the times where you feel like you want to just put down your pen yeah. and walk away, you can't because it's a part of you. Those times you gotta pick it up. It's, it's like, like you know, feel like going to the gym. It's yeah, the man. Going. What? Yeah. What? But that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole different conversation. And then just, man, your why is so important, people. Mm -hmm. If you cling on to that. No matter what season of your art or what season of your life that you may be in right now, remember why you're here. You know why you do what you do, and if anything tries to throw you off track of your why, man, just go back to your humble beginnings, man. Why did you start? Ask yourself those questions. Why did you start? Why do you still do it? Do you feel under you know undervalued? Yeah. And move forward, man. That and that just draws back into you know the bounce back of. When you feel like you lost that passion, right? Mm -hmm. So, Brother J. Roddy, mm -hmm. has there ever been a time in your artistic role where you felt as though you lost your passion? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And this goes past the writing block and, like, you just lose mental capacity to just create. What do you say about still there? You know, you just lost... Your passion. I actually wrote a poem, but um, I don't have. I'm trying to find my poem. And I can't find it. Probably my old phone. But mm -hmm. basically, it was a time when I was, I was, I was, I didn't want to be a poet anymore because everywhere I kind of felt like there was so many open mics. The game was so saturated. Everybody was <laughs> their poet and the poetess and the the poet prophet and all these different names. Oh, I'm like, I'm like okay, something man, the poet right. and. In somebody the poem, <laughs> and I was kind of feeling the same again. I was still struck with insecurities about certain things, yeah, and still feeling like, why not me? And you know, there's a lot of things going on during that time. So, I wrote a poem about uh, at times I don't want to be a poet, yeah, man. I love spoken word, but every time I look, it's never a vent for it. And that was the intro to the poem, you know, that's kind of like all I had, but uh, but <laughs> but for the most part, man, Wars. definitely, definitely felt. That passion lacking, you, uh, dwindling and, and falling short, and and it wasn't even because I I, I just didn't want to do it no more. It was just <laughs> it was so much going on internally and externally. It was, and externally. On, it was like, like man, I don't want to do this no more, man. Like a Wells Waldo for poetry. Yeah. But luckily I didn't quit. I mean, during those times I didn't want to be a poet. I was still writing poems about all this, you know. So yeah. like, you know, go figure. What go about you though? Figure. Yeah, man. Yeah. Losing my passion is like, 
it's 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 almost like man, how can what's a good way to put it? You know how you get dressed for something? Okay. And you're at in the beginning stages you're anxious to go to it. Yeah. But the closer you get to the date and then you start to look at other people's like, events or whatever, you start to lose that, that spark of why you wanted to go to that event and why you want to wear this outfit mm-hmm. to that event. You're like, man, I'm just about to put on a t-shirt mm-hmm. and some jeans and just chill. Instead of like, man, I had this jersey. I was about to kill like the first day of school almost. I'm about to kill him with this. You know? And you had that conversation with your man say he got three page Jordans. Right, summer. you, you got, got three page Jordans. I got us some new balances, What was we wearing back in the day? FUBU or something like that? Huh? We had to... All that. Is that. That's a Cleveland thing, brother. We were wearing new FUBU. Hey, man. It was <laughs> a lot, man. Prince George's County. <laughs> My bad, Prince George's County. <laughs> you uh, well-off people. It's like, no. Nah, oh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not everybody. <laughs> no, nah, I was just messing with y'all. Nah, you're right. You're right. I saw him. But no. Nah. I said something about Tariq. With, uh, <laughs> the modern-day buoy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said all the kids that grew up yeah, to two hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but nah, it's funny, man. Oh man, that was good. But nah, like losing my passion was like was like my thorn in my side, man. Mm-hmm. It still kind of is because even with now, it's I'm so going much going on. on. It's so much going on. Somebody said reading is awesome and fundamental. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, I thought, yeah. No, I thought I said something too. No way. But it, it's it's a common trait. I feel as though, especially in a, in a microwave type of uh, society that we're in right back, now, back. because if it's not hot to the community, you gonna feel it. If you don't get as much likes, I don't care if you value likes or you don't value likes. You want your stuff to be heard. You want it to be seen. And if you feel as though like yo, this, I feel like this about to get me like yeah, a cool hundred some likes, mm-hmm. and you get like twelve. I was thinking with that too, man. Shoot. Yeah, speak on Not that. Not necessarily a question, but more like more thought. Like, okay. So we know on Instagram and stuff like that, social media. Yeah. It's, on, it's only a, a few ways you know people saw your stuff. If they like it or if they show you the views. Like if it's a video, views. Likes too, but views. If it's yeah. a picture, likes, right? So those are only two ways that you know people, that you know people saw your stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's easy to get caught up in, in that. It's you very know, easy, especially in the back of your mind, you know, hey man, people, they ain't liking it, maybe they scroll past, but you know, somebody actually sit and look, they'll have a sentence to like it and sit and look at you, or sit and watch the video, you know what I mean, so, that that social media thing is tricky, man, that's not like an old man right now, that's right. it's tricky, man. It's tricky, but it's like, tricky. that's why you have to understand your why. Yeah, especially right now, especially like, that, that's perfect, that's perfect you say that, your why, because right now with artists, and we're and we're and we're building on a foundation, and we're developing and expand and expanding and diversifying our portfolio and things like that, right? Right. Um, right now, we're kind of like I don't want to say it's a need, but it's kind of like a, a a desire to have that that uh, reciprocated back to you in a way that you can take it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the likes of views or the uh, the after the show, hey man, thank you, or yeah. the book sale. You know what I mean? You're looking for those ways to show some kind of substantial growth, I okay. guess you can say. But your why keeps you from losing yourself in the mindset that you need that in order to prove to you that you've grown. I agree. Right? Because I think growth can transcend likes and views. Likes and views. The growth can be the conversation you have with somebody. Okay. The growth can be, hey, this person bought a book. Growth can be, hey, this person liked it. It may not be a million likes, but... This person, you know what I mean? Like, I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think that 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 keeps you on that that humble path that we're talking about, that humble path. Yeah, humility will get you far. Definitely. Always remembering, like, there's somebody else doing the same thing you're doing. There's dozens of people, tons of people, to the left, to the right of you, front, back, wherever. But you can't be that crab in the barrel, man. Nah, you nah. Can't, if you have that mindset, then you will not get far. I feel, you know, like and losing your passion and getting it back. Getting it back is when you feel as though that you know. Well, let me re- 
trace what I'm saying. Getting your passion back is when you block out all of those determined or not determined or did those those things that you see the social media things the, mm -hmm. the likes and the views and you block all of that out you just focus on it your yeah. why you focus yeah. on just that organic feel of writing something mm -hmm. somebody's gonna hear it and somebody who's somebody in this world or who's deemed as somebody might dig it mm -hmm. and might want to take you and your art to the next level for example, like when you did the Par Standard, uh, Why I Love Black Women Challenge. Yeah. Um, I was just randomly on Instagram one day and I seen it. I said, "Oh snap!" I mean, I already seen. I, like, I didn't. I didn't hear the video yet. I saw the caption. I saw the suspenders. I saw the tie. <laughs> and I saw the beard. Uh, and I saw it in the background. I said, "Okay, okay, okay." Right. G G went into his Rico Suave bag. <laughs> How was that work? How was that work? G went into his. Uh, more chestnut bag <laughs> and pull it up that yo. that whole set, you know. Sam, no, I'm playing. But when I saw it, I said, "Yo, this joint probably gonna be fire. This joint probably fire." Like I, I didn't see the video yet, but I saw all I saw was that one little glimpse. Mm -hmm. I said, "This joint probably fire." And then I saw it like, lead tag the page, so I said, "I didn't listen to this real quick. I listened to it." Yeah. And man. the whole time I'm like, "Okay, okay, <laughs> this joint is alright. This joint is alright. Yeah. Okay, okay." And then I went to the page, and I saw the page was even more. I said, yo, this joint is a hit. I said, oh, snap. This joint is a hit. I yeah, said, yeah, man. man. But I think, like, initially, initially, man, I think, for real, for real, that's, that's all you need, man. Those those moments can 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 propel you, man. Right. Can can spring you forward and confidence, you know what I mean, or encouragement, whatever you may need. Like, like when I saw that, I felt inspired. I man, I wasn't going to do it. I said, nah, you got that. I'm... He got it. Hey, nah, like, and I was kind of like, man, glad that he did that. You know, I was, I was like, glad you did that. You know, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm saying, like, I, I, can, I can definitely stand and cheer, but that inspired me because I'm like, man, yo, that's what's up. Because cause that right there, yeah. And that, that was, was definitely like needed. The spur of the yeah. moment. I had, yeah. I had bat been battling with doing it. Uh -huh. I knew I wanted to do I knew I was going to do it, but I didn't know what to say. Okay. So, you know, I just kind of meditated on it. Like, dang. Because you don't want it. Being a poet, it's hard sometimes when you do stuff like that because I, I feel like it is mm -hmm. because you people almost expect you to do some real profound mm -hmm. drastic yeah. you know super heavy uh, heavy worded and mm -hmm. like strong dictionary word using and the voices and all this right you know captivity of uh, right. everything like come on man come on man Whoa, whoa, my mom is in Hawaii right now. Oh, so nice. Shout out to... She's living the best life. She's in Hawaii right now. <laughs> nah, but uh, I think I have... Uh, well, no, I know I have you and Randy and Cal and JL and, and uh, a lot of the people in my circle to thank for that. Mm -hmm. Because you don't really get to that level without having that network. Like, you can't yeah. shut yourself yeah. out from those. And they're not naysayers. And this is one thing that I think I wanted to speak on as okay. well. The people in your circle and the people that you trust with their advice or their perspective aren't naysayers if they don't agree with your art. They just may not agree with what you're saying right now. Or they might want to pick at what it is that you're trying to say. You know? Like, you would ask me all the time, so, like, what are you trying to say when you say this? Or what are you mm -hmm. trying to, you know, where are you trying to go with this? Mm -hmm. You need people like that. They're not attacking you. Right. They're trying to put a bold yeah. print on your purpose. They're trying to help you elevate you. And that, those are one of the things that I feel like people can get discouraged, especially when they're first starting out. Because they're like, man, you don't get it, man. You don't understand my vision, what I'm trying to, what I'm saying, man. All right, man, no, I'm not going to ask you for nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Instead of doing that. How about ask, well, why do you feel that way? Or what what yeah. do you see? Or what do you hear yeah. when, you know, I present this to you? Like, that's important. That's that's maturity right there. Yeah. That's humility right there, too. Instead of taking it right away, you're going to be defensive and you're going to poke your chest out. You're like, okay, well, you know, what do you mean when you when you ask that question? What exactly right. you, are, you, are you trying to have me answer? And I think that opens the door. So, okay, well, that's what I'm trying to say. Real, for real. Yeah, man. It keeps it going. Yeah, and... And it's just a matter of 
Man, how did I get here? I got all these people, because you start alone, I feel. When you decide, when you sit there, you decide, man, I'm about to be, I'm about to be a poet. No one, I feel like, pushed you to that, you know, just like when, when you're on a team versus when you're on an individual sport. Mm. It's you're, you're in that bout, you're in that round, and you got to dig deep. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. Mm. Nobody's there to really be like, yeah, man, in the beginning. But then you see people in your corner, and you got the, you got the towel man, you got the cut yeah. man, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it, you got all of that, it's, and you got your coach in your ear, like, yeah, man, this you got to go here, you got to go there. That's your mentors. Those are the people you know that you that you follow behind. You got your cut man, your best friend, and your buddy. Just be like, yeah, man, no, you good, you good, man. Just you know, try to look like protect this, go that way. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of you know, using these type of metaphors, elevate to something like this. You know, if, of course you're not gonna understand when you're in that training mode and when you're right promoting your art. But once you get to that stage, like my girlfriend right now is in Chicago competing for the National Slam competition. I mean, I think she started writing maybe, what, a year ago? Mm -hmm. And look how her, like, her focusing on her why has taken her to that. You know she, I mean? She's even doing something different than we do. She's doing slam. She's you doing slam. I mean? So so I applaud that. Like, we're spoken, we're artists. Yeah. She's doing, like, slam is doing slam. Slam is spoken yeah. word. And then I, like, I can't wait to get on the show because she's going to be one of those to really just make you think. Yeah, definitely. You know? Like slam and spoken word is two different things, and my mom's kind of struggled with this when she, when people ask them or people ask her, "What do we do?" Like, oh, he does poetry. What kind of poetry? Uh, he just he poems. he be on stage saying stuff. <laughs> you know, like man. So what you what you feeling like, man? Where, where's your where's your mind at right now? I'm I'm thinking about the uh, just the whole giving back piece now. Mm. Because I know um, we had spoke briefly on the Baltimore Homeless Festival. Yeah. And how that is that we're just giving back to the community. And, you know, some kind of way where it's like, well, I'm not worrying about the money. I'm not worrying about nothing like that. You're asking to come up for a good cause. Yeah. I want to do that. And that's how you keep your common touch, I would say. Um, because, like, again, I mean, the guy asked, he reached out to you about doing it. He told me, I said, yeah, definitely. When I, when I found out what it was about, he said it was for the homeless. I said, okay, cool. That's the back. We can do that. Yeah, man. Um, and then certain certain events like like Art All Night that's coming up uh, next oh. month towards the end. That's um, gonna be real. We'll be performing at Art All Night. Oh, by the way, at Congress Heights Arts and Culture Center. Yeah, yeah. Art All Night in DC. Um, you'll get more information on that coming soon. Um, but yeah, stuff like that it was more it was more professional, more formal. Where we had like I had to literally do an application, and I had to send I sent clips from the podcast, I sent clips from my shows, and I sent uh like. I think a headshot or something like that, a picture of us or whatever. Okay. Um, just to make sure that they knew who we were. And, and that's different than saying, hey, come out to this event and do this. You know, either way, I would love to do both. Um, but I know this one is more for a cause mm. and this one is kind of like for an event. You know what I'm trying to say? But I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to separate because both were events, but I think just the, the message to okay. the cause, like that's why I say cause instead of event for this one, like the homeless festival, made me think of like, just giving back and no matter how far you advance your career or how, how you get in your skill and talent, you still have to make sure you're doing that. Because that's what communities are built on. People that leave and come back, people that grow and help out from where they came from or the place that's in need. It's a verse that's stuck in my head, man. I've been reading, I've been reading um, 2 Corinthians 8, 14. Uh, well, 2 Corinthians 8, really 1 to 14, really. But in 14, it speaks about um, your... Abundance you have in your present time should fulfill someone else's needs so that when they have abundance, they'll fulfill your needs. Mm. And it kind of keeps everything going. So it speaks about equality, it speaks about balance, equilibrium. It speaks about um, each one teach one. That, that speaks towards helping out. It speaks towards giving back, community, all that, all wrapped up in one verse. And it's, it's like, I don't know, man. The more I think about it, the more I can like go on tangents about different parts that stand out to me. But uh, just that community aspect when it comes to poetry. Again, in Baltimore. Now, the poets in Baltimore, from what I've seen, like I said, I don't live in Baltimore, so I don't really know the nitty gritty. But from what I've seen as outside observer, and one of the mental a few shows out there, yeah, man. their connection amongst the artists Too tight. is tight. Too it's tight. It's tight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, saw, I went out to a show recently, like a couple weeks ago, 
and it was for like uh, their slam team going to nationals too, but I really didn't. I was a fly on the wall to be honest yeah. with you, because we saw like the people that we know, like we poor name Nate, Sir Alex, poor name Nate, Sir Alex. We saw you know like uh, Tesla or Black Chakra, you know his stage name is, and uh, Nia June, and a couple other uh, great poets from that area just supporting each other. They just came just to, you know, just to chill back and just mm. be there, you know? Mm. It's like, once you get that type of culture or that type of community within your art, mm -hmm. where everybody's just like, it's no question they're going to be at the show. Yeah, you know, you know, if you see this, you're going to see that. You're going to yeah, see that, you're, you're going to see, see that. Yeah, right, right. So you know it's going to be a solid few that's going to be in attendance. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to know that you're going to be one of those solid few in attendance for their thing. You right. know, like we get asked to go out there all the time to, you know, speak on something, perform, or do mm -hmm. step in on the open mic. Not even to perform, just to, just to go. You know how sometimes I be like, I just feel excited knowing that I know people like you, O, and Lucky. Oh, uh, I'd be hyped. Sometimes. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, you know, thinking about like the conversation we had the other day. Um, what's so like man you know stuff we plan on doing and whatnot i'm yeah. like man just just a couple years ago I, I didn't really know oh i didn't really know lucky i mean I, you know of course i knew you could be frat brothers yeah brothers, brothers, everything but i'm like man, i ain't really know lucky and, and then we weren't even doing do, the nuance thing so it's kind of like a couple years ago us you know I me mean, was bros but now it's like man I'm, I'm so glad that things are being decisions are being made and choices are being made and things are happening to where we have a genuine connection with each other and like I said, when I see Baltimore, it makes me think of that home team that we have. And it's like, man, I, I, I want to grow and develop that because, man, that, that community aspect, that community can grow and grow and grow as much right. as we put and water it and feed it and, yeah. you, know, let, you know, let it grow, man. And yeah. I, like, I like that. And we like, all, like, I mean, I feel like we're all trees just being planted by rivers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in any season... Everybody blooms in a different way, mm -hmm. you know. Nobody's the same, you know. You got O doing his thing, like you, it, we can go, we can have a whole show speaking about <laughs> what mm -hmm. O is doing, and then Lucky is starting to come out of her shell mm -hmm. and just be this amazing person. And then you got, you know, you. I got, I got. I was about to say, but hey, I was hey, waiting. You know, uh, let me let hey, me hey, go, go ahead, man. Go, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. They said like hot kicks. Kicks. So check this out, right? Solomon, a short story by J.R.I.D. is my second book. My first book was entitled Sophia, which was a collection of poems. You see okay. the difference between the paper hey, and, and, the, and you know, the, the hardback? The paper and the hardback. You see the difference that Sound we like have. Somebody said, screaming, I got my book. Is that Mama Flair? That's Mama Flair that said Mama that. Flair got her book. Mama Flair got her book. That's what I'm talking so about. So Mama Flair got her book. What you think you need to do, huh? Get you one of these books right here. Book, so. Get you one of these books right here. If you follow me on Instagram at J-R-I-D, J-R-A-H-D, the link is in my bio to get your book. Yes, Short story by J-R-I-D, my second book. I'm very proud. It's right here. Stay tuned for, for the book signing release, all that good stuff. Um, also, keep your ears and eyes open for a future promo. I got a lot of things in store. Hey. And I'm, I'm sure that you guys will like what's going on, but the book is out, man. It's definitely out. I put a lot of time into this. And um, a lot of people are sitting and thinking, like, a Going back to what we talked about earlier, yeah. feeling undervalued, right? Feeling undervalued. Now, I wouldn't say undervalued, but I kind of felt unsure releasing this. Only because kind of like, man, is it going to sell? Is people going to buy? Because you can right. know how say, hey, I got Yeezys for sale. Mm. The DM's popping. Boom. Man, I need, what, I size need, you got? what size you got? How much they cost? Mm -hmm. Where can I meet you? Yeah. But soon you say, hey man, I got a book, or I got a show, or I got this, I got that. Books. And you, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't get the same, the same amount of you know responses or whatever, or the, the same frequency and intensity that you get for the yeast. So I'm saying this right here, man. We want to support our own. That's what it's about, man. It starts right here. It starts with each one, teach one. Just, just grab a book, talk to about somebody else, and you know they'll, they'll, they'll do the same thing. Yeah, but man. as long as we keep doing stuff like this, man, like I said, for me, and I don't want to take you over the bills you were on. No, you good. I want to try to get back to that. You're good, you groovy. But to me, right, like, so, so like I said, again, we have this right here. Just this and how it's different and it's, it's, it's the print. Talk everything. to them. Everything different. And then Talk you have this right here. Mm. It's a hardback book. 
is a short story, it's not poems. Everything different. Is, is different. He different. It's different. You know what I mean? It's growth, he it's development. Different. Is it the shoes? Man, I don't know, man. I is think it it's the sh- I, is it the cover? Is I think it's because I have a haircut since oh, June. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the the difference between the, the quality of the product and yeah. this man. I don't know, man. I, man. I don't know, man. I'm proud of myself for this, man. Hey, man, I'm proud, I'm proud of you myself too. because because it took a lot of time to get this done. Man, listen. And to try to find out how I want to do it, the aesthetic, man, what's going to pop, yeah. and, you know. Yeah. But with us here now. So, again, yeah, I'm saying yeah. for the third time, so uh, Solomon, I'm sorry, Solomon Shorts by JYD, JYD is available now. Blurb.com. Link is in my bio on Instagram. I put no posts on Facebook and on the Poor Life and on New Orleans page. The book. Yeah, get the book, man. Get the book, man. Yeah. Get the book, man. How we looking? Get the book, man. Get the book, man. Brother, it's just, man, something, man, what? Yeah. Brother got his second book out. Yeah. Yeah, we could. We so published author. Come on, man. I'm excited about, about what's going you on. You know what I'm saying? 20-something. I'm excited. You know? I'm excited. Poet extraordinaire. And just imagine, just imagine, right, if if if, if, the, if we were to let those feelings of un, being undervalued oh, consume us. If we stopped, if we would have stopped, and, and our why became or whatever, or what if, or or what if, and sh- a dream deferred, right? Man, drive like a raisin in the sun, man. With 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 with, 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 a, with a crust and sugar over like a crust like a sugary sweet or something like that. What what did he say? Dream deferred. I have to look at the yeah, word for word. Yeah, back word. word. Dang, I feel so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we both back, but no, nah, man. For the Poor Life Podcast, man. Poor Life Podcast. We in here. So we again, in. again, if you like what you hear, listen, subscribe, and enjoy. Pass the word. I'm JYD. And I'm G. Share, man. Yeah. Share in this game. Have a good evening, y'all. Peace. <laughs>